Stop right there. Somebody's all has got to go. So let's get this party started. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with gold and weighing in officially at 133.2 pounds. A perfect professional record. 14 fights, 14 victories, including eight big wins by knockout from Sao Paulo, Brazil. The reigning, defending, undefeated. WBO Women's Lightweight Champion of the World, the Queen, Rose Volante! And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with gold and weighing in officially at 133.9 pounds. Since capturing Olympic gold, she now has a perfect professional record consisting of 12 fights, 12 victories, including five wins by knockout, fighting out of Bray, Ireland, and representing all of Ireland, the reigning, defending, undefeated IBF, WBA, women's lightweight champion of the world, KT Irish, Peggy Taylor. Rosa, you had to finish your instructions. You've already received your instructions. Get on a pelea limpia. Give me a clean fight. Obedece mis instrucciones todos los tiempos. Obey my commands at all times. Y mucho más importante, protégete durante pelea todo el tiempo. Much more important, protect yourself at all times. So, chum up. Good luck to both of you. Benji Estevez there, referee. 27 years as a Doing. top referee. Katie Taylor, one of the top amateurs in the history of women's boxing. Rose Volante did not start training at all until she was 26 years old when she found herself at 231 pounds. So she is already a success story. I wonder, Chris Mannix, how can she box against Katie Taylor? I guess we'll find out early. I don't think she can box against Katie Taylor. I think she's going to have to knock out Katie Taylor. And Katie, as skilled as she is, she's the complete fighter. Round number one, Volante aggressive from the very start, moving quickly. Two minute rounds. Taylor taking a close look, but Volante is fast and aggressive. Taylor being defensively responsible. Certainly, Sergio, a little wary as well. You have to respect someone right in front of you like that. You have to respect Volante. She's coming right at you. She has good pop in both punches. And she's a champion, too, an undefeated champion. I tell you, they're clashing right now. Volante is coming in, stepping in with the right hand. She could catch Taylor with something or get caught with something. You don't want to exchange with the Volante if you're Taylor. You have too much pedigree. Fight behind the jab, box, move around. And knocks her down right there with the hook. Yes. Cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, ¿está bien? Ok, enséñame. And she did catch her on the way in. A knockdown already for Taylor in round one. Now goes to work. All right, break, break. Limpio, limpio. Stop, stop, stop. Break. Suelta. Taylor has gone the distance five of the last six fights. Suelta, suelta. Although, Chris, I don't think we've seen her lose a round, right? No, I don't think we have either. And people have criticized Katie Taylor no, no, for her no, no, lack no, no, of power. No, but as we said at the top of the show, she has not been fighting opponents who have been willing to do what Rose Volante is doing, which is stand in front of her and trade punches with her. And you can see the fire in Katie Taylor right there because she's extremely sportsmanlike. And yet when she got hit in the back of the head, she immediately popped Rose Volante in the back of the head to let her know. You cannot do that to me. Oh, yeah. Both fighters, both champions are soft-smoking. They're quiet, but they have that confidence. Ten seconds. That, Ten segundos. That viciousness in them. Quick first round. They only go two minutes in women's boxing, but a knockdown Time. for Taylor already. Katie Taylor rocked Volante at the end of that round. All right, sit. Give me the ball, please. Close your eyes. Speed. Speed. Now you got it. Breathe. Shoot. 
Drink. Oi? Good? Like we touched on it earlier, uh, Chris, Belante's aggression is going to help Katie Taylor's power. Right there, she was just a little bit too aggressive, a little bit of, of a head clash, but that punch was clean, and that definitely rocked Rose Volante. That was actually a short right hand. You can see, I mean, that is extremely short. It was short and right on the tip of the chin. Wow, the phantom punch. Except this landed, of course. Round number two, again, a two-minute round, so they'll go quickly. Scheduled for 10, lightweight championship in women's boxing. Katie Taylor, as you said, Sergio, play to your strength. Uh, break, no punches. You have too much pedigree, but she was wary, but she was watching for what was happening in front of her. The fury that Volante brought, brought could be exploited. Taylor taking a long look, but keeping Volante at the end of her jab and fires off her right hand. All right, break, break. Left thing. You know, Katie Taylor early in her career is dealing with the same problems that top-tier men have dealt with. She has a tough time getting opponents to step in the ring with her. Rose Volante is here because she's being paid $150,000 to be here. Hmm. That's a good purse in women's uh, fighting. Breaks, right thing, like those, by the back. way, sharp right hand by Volante step as back. well. She oh, still remains back. dangerous. I was going to say, Katie Taylor needs to close her mouth because she got caught with her mouth open. That's very dangerous, especially if you're punching as hard as Volante is. Hard thudding shots from Volante, not as crisp right, and short back, as Katie, Taylor's, on, but back. still dangerous. Rose Volante, by the way, that first year that she started training, she was 26, lost 90 pounds, said she wanted a box. The trainers at her gym in Brazil wouldn't train her at first, didn't take her seriously, and now she's got a world title belt. That's how far she's come. Tell you what, Katie Taylor's mixing it up with Volante. I don't know if that's the best idea, but that's what happens when you knock down your opponent so early. Going to the body there with a combination, following up to the head. See a little bit of a mark there on Rose Volante's right cheek. Ten seconds, ten segundos. Yeah, you, we all get trained for three-minute rounds, so these rounds will go quickly. You can see that red spot on the cheek. And did she catch Taylor? She ducks down. There will be danger whenever Volante is up and throwing. Katie Taylor slipped on Volante's corner, but Volante did the right thing, went after her. By the way, live on April 13th, don't miss Jaime Munguia's return to the ring against Dennis Hogan. That's live from Munguia's home turf in Mexico. That's April 13th, right here on DAZN. Sink it down here, get her looking down, we get that shot back. You good, another shot? You good, you good? Come on, you she's doing the work for it. Let her get close, fucking let her run into something. Let's go, let's go. Good. Sergio, what do you think about Ross sentiment and what he said there? Perfect the instructions. Exactly what I said. You don't want to go out there just because you knocked her down. You, you don't want to go out there and get reckless and try to land the same punch again. Get behind the jab, slowly get back to hurting her. Look, Taylor didn't come in thinking Rose Volante was not at her level. She said, look, she's probably the best fighter I've ever fought. She's game, dangerous, probably the toughest of my career. But as her trainer, Ross Animate, told us, look, she has more to, to pull from. She has just many more dimensions in the ring. A lot more dimensions. A gold medalist. She started boxing earlier. I mean, she has everything going for her. So why fight Volante's fight? Jumping in with the jab and still fairly aggressive. She likes to fight. I mean, basically, she, you can see she enjoys someone who comes after her because she can fight. But so can Rose Volante. So this is, I mean, it, it makes for an exciting fight, but you're giving her a, an opportunity to land something when she shouldn't. She should be missing like that. You know, with Rose Volante, we could be seeing something of a preview of what we might see with Amanda Serrano against Katie Taylor down the line. Another big puncher that Katie left to contend with. And Serrano a lot more polished. That could be a big fight on the horizon. Serrano signed up to fight on DAZN to box. So again, that one is out there at a certain point. Ah, uh, break, no punching. 
I'm already, I'm already noticing that at, um, Volante's not really going at Katie Taylor. She's staying in the middle of the ring. She wants Katie to come to her. I don't know if that's because of her age. She is 36 years old, doesn't want to follow the younger fighter around, or she just wants Katie to do all the job and punch in between the shots. I think there's only so much energy to go around Sergio, too. She's been beaten back just a little bit. She's obviously in great condition, but you know, th these are tiring, tiring shots. She just ate a hook right there. That's a great Ten point. Yes, great point, BK. Final seconds. Hi. Let's go to LZ Granderson, LZ. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, BK. You already mentioned earlier that one of the reasons why Rose Vellante was able to start so quickly is because she was so passionate about losing weight. Well, what you didn't mention was that she was actually a law student when she was at her heaviest. In fact, when she decided to become a full-time fighter, she was at a crossroad. Spend more money pursuing to become a lawyer or spend more time and money becoming a professional fighter. Now, my mom would probably have a heart attack if I chose the latter, but obviously it worked out really well for Volante. Back to you guys. LZ, thank you so much. Sergio, I, I wonder, like, how much then you make an adjustment in your head or how much your spirit is affected after you're dropped so early. Can Volante make an adjustment, really? I mean, we know what she is. She's a pressure fighter. She has a good right hand. She's not, she's not getting close enough to land body shots because Taylor's not letting her. And look, Volante is very busy. You know, copy box stats are kept, and they give you a very good indication as we get to round four. Katie Taylor in the black, Volante, Rose Volante in the red. And work rate is something that can be tracked fight to fight. And Rose Volante throws 53 punches around. And keep in mind, those are two minute rounds. Taylor only 40. So while Taylor might be much more accurate or more measured, that doesn't mean everything. It does show you that Volante comes in to fight. Diminished somewhat now. Her mouth is open, sucking in some extra air. I'll tell you what, I heard all about the Irish here in Philadelphia. The Irish in Boston sang a lot better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, that was a little Irish singing there, Chris Mannix. You guys in Boston sang a lot harder. We love our Katie Taylor in Boston. Katie Taylor goes to the body as well. Great body shot right there in the middle of the solar plexus. You know, Rose Vellante has looked a lot different these last two rounds than she did in the first two. I mean, it looked to me like she came out going for broke in those first two. Really slowed down the work rate last round and a half. And you know, guys, you know what I see? Like, it's easy because Taylor and Tevin Farmer have fought on the same card now three straight times. But there is a mental intensity that you see in both. Oh, I mean, it's, it's so impressive. Volante complaining about headbutts. It looks like she's bleeding on the left side of her temple, up by her braids. Maybe due to a head clash, she is complaining. Pretty quick turnaround here for Katie Taylor. She beat Eva Wallstrom December 15th, went back to her home in Bray, Ireland for three weeks for Christmas, turned right back around in the United States for camp in Connecticut, and now she's back here for St. Patrick's Day. But again, that's a big part of the strength in that Katie Taylor, Tevin Farmer are back, and you can watch them on the zone every three months or so. It happens quickly. By the way, John O'Carroll is fighting Tevin Farmer in the main event, and earlier this week, Katie Taylor and, and Carroll from Dublin, Ireland, had a little fun at the Philadelphia Art Museum where Rocky Balboa ran the steps. Yeah, that beard was longer back then. That looked to me like a walk up the steps more than a run. <laughs> they said they later ran, because they said they raced. And John O said, oh, hey, look, I was in shoes, and I still won. John O'Carroll there, still smiling. Checking out a picture of himself. Yeah, well, <laughs> makes him happy. He's getting ready again for the biggest chance of his professional career, going for the IBF title at 130 pounds and going up against a very skilled fighter in Tevin Farmer. Co-feature here, Katie Taylor, Rose Volante, again for the lightweight championship. Volante, third title defense of her WBO title. Taylor has titles in the WBA and the IBF. I know it's confusing, but Katie Taylor seemingly the best lightweight in the world in women's boxing. Is that true, Chris? At 135 pounds, absolutely. The question becomes, where does she rank among the women pound for pound? And we're going to learn a lot about that. Amanda Serrano's out there. 
And I think inside Katie Taylor's camp, they'd love to see a Cecilia Breakhouse fight at some point in 2019. Hooks already from Katie Taylor going hooks to the body and a right hand lands the combination. She has the ability, Sergio, to go from a fifth gear to sixth gear. You think her work rate is outstanding, and then suddenly it gets even better. Because it's, it's because of her footwork. Her footwork allows her to throw that many punches. Ooh, great body shot right there. That caught the attention of Volante. Yeah, Volante buckles over slightly there. That hurt her. She is hurt right now. She's in a lot of pain. You can see on her face. She can't hide it. Hard hook to the head. Katie Taylor's breaking her down. Head and then body. Beautiful combinations by Katie Taylor. Tapped her upstairs just to land a body shot. You're right, and that's the right word, Sergio. Taps her upstairs, goes hard to the body. Now varies it with double right hands. I would love to see Katie Taylor get an angle right here. Now stay in front of her. Tap her, get an angle, and then tap to the body. It was that body shot you mentioned that really hurt Rose Volante and slowed her down. Beautiful right hand there by Taylor. In round five, it's become all Katie Taylor here. More sharp combinations. Ten seconds, ten segundos. Volante much slower now. The start's coming out of her. And will benefit ah. from the one minute rest. There's no water there. The, the stomach and the belly. Talk it to her. Awesome. Rosa, you're good? I'm good. We go back to the lead game. You can't overplay that jab. This is the fight where you got a Larry Holmes stick. You can kill her with it. You'll kill her with it. Boxing beautifully. Boxing beautifully. You good? Deep breath, deep breath. And listen, on the way out, though, just be careful. You finish. Just don't go straight back where she finds you with some sloppy shit. Good luck over there, it was a nice turn. Yeah. She doesn't like it. Relax, man. Every time we're close, too. Don't overplay the headshot. Stool, stool. Katie Taylor turned pro at the age of 30 after two Olympic appearances. She's been very active as a pro. Six fights in 2017, four in 2018. Third fight in five months. Extremely impressive every time out. Extremely consistent every single fight. I think this is the most impressive that I've seen Katie Taylor. She's fighting a top level 135 pounder and from the first round on, she sapped the spirit out of her. Oh, that was a vicious right hand. She just landed on Volante. I don't know how much longer Volante could take this punishment. Yeah, I don't think much either, Sir Judge. I mean, you could see the agony on her face in the last round. You see in round five, 28 punches landed by Taylor through 60 of them, and that's in a two minute round. And Chris, we expected this. We knew Volante was going to come forward aggressively, which was going to give Katie Taylor a chance to land the big shots and hurt Volante. She has that one punch power, Rose Volante, but Katie Taylor beats you like that. Punches in bunches with pinpoint accuracy. And now blood coming from the nose of Rose Volante as well. She's just getting beaten down. Chris. The Irish are coming out, Chris. N not quite like Boston, but it's there. Look, Barry McGuigan, the great Irish champion, is here tonight as well. He's here with Luke Campbell. Barry in terrific condition. Great champion from the 1980s, from the border of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Everything Katie Taylor's throwing is getting through that guard of Rose Volante. Ten seconds. Yes, Volante getting through the round. You got to give her that. She took some hard head shots there. The vicious body shot in the previous round. Ah. Getting ready for the main event. Before Chris joined us out here, he had a conversation with the champ in the main event, Tevin Farmer. Tevin, it feels like we see you every other month now. Fourth fight for you in the last eight months. Why is it important to you to stay this busy? I mean, it's important for me to stay busy because it keeps you sharp, it keeps you focused, um, it keeps you in shape, and it keeps you from out of trouble, you know, staying in the gym at all times. 
These press conferences with you and Jono have been pretty entertaining. I asked him, where did all this bad blood come from? Where, to you, where did it all start? Well, it all started from, like, months ago when he had a fight with the, uh, the guy, Fornoise, whatever the guy's name is. And um, he just started tweeting me. I didn't know who he was. never heard of him, not anything. I mean, who is this guy? And it, he just kept doing it over and over. And then I finally went on Bike Rack, looked him up. And then I looked at, I seen that he was, like, ranked high in the IBF. I'm like, okay, so he... he he, so I might be fighting him soon, and he just kept going off at the mouth. So, you know, um, I got past my fight, and I had another fight set up and whenever I wanted to, basically. And I told Eddie and Lou, I want I want him next, you know. He got a draw with, with, with his opponent, and he wasn't supposed to fight for a world title. I gave him a shot at the world title because I could have fought anybody I wanted. He wasn't the mandatory. So I gave him a shot, and, you know, I feel like he he he, he been real disrespectful, and, you know, he he ain't give homage, you know. He, he only gets a shot because of me. Farmer in our main event. Got Chris Mannix from moments ago. Tevin Farmer and John O'Carroll out of Dublin, Ireland. This is Katie Taylor of Bray, Ireland. Volante there with a, a nice body shot, Sergio. She tries to get back in the fight. Two two good body shots. I've seen that Volante landed already. I think she's she's feeling uh, the pressure. This is a must-win round for her if she wants to win this fight. Showing a lot of heart here coming back too, and it's just really not going her way. A and facing a relentless machine. In Taylor, I mean, there's no 10-second interval, Chris, where she just is not there in your face. No, that's what Katie Taylor does. Stays busy, stays active. And we talked coming in about how Katie Taylor has been virtually untouchable in her entire career. As you might expect, I've got her winning every single round of this fight. After what we've seen with Gabe Rosado and Selecki, I'm not going to count Volante <laughs> out until the last <laughs> round of <laughs> the last minute of the last round. Chris, if we get a chance, we'll talk about that. We'll stay focused on this. <laughs> but we already heard some, I don't know, Puzzling scorecards, I would put it that way. It's a good judging crew this time around. Steve Weisfeld is one of the judges here. It's an experienced group. And again, try not to rush to judgment, but some puzzling judging earlier on. Here, round seven, Katie Taylor in the black on St. Patrick's Day weekend. Rose Volante out of Brazil in the red. by Taylor. We talked to Demetrius Andrade early. Triple G has joined the DAZN team. Huge news locking up the top middleweights. Let's take a look. wanted a fight you see Rose Volante there but let's talk Triple G for a moment Golovkin signed up now Chris Mannix it can all happen at 160 pounds yeah the middleweight division it goes through every fighter at his own at this point but one thing I took away from my time with Golovkin in Los Angeles he's not as focused on being a unified or undisputed middleweight champion as he was before he's looking for big fights and that could mean 160 but I think he's open to going to 168, Callum Smith, Dimitri Bivol. He just wants the biggest fights over the next six. Taylor goes to work here in round eight, battering Volante. Volante stays in and tries to trade. Saw so the numbers there quickly through seven rounds. Copy box numbers obviously in favor of Katie Taylor. Is Triple G big enough at 168? Can that happen, Chris? He's flirted with the idea of moving up before, most notably in some went-nowhere talks with Andre Ward. His trainer, Abel Sanchez, told me he's comfortable with, with Gennady at 160 really? pounds. Because he's kind of a natural 154, maybe a little bigger than most guys at junior middleweight. Did a lot of his damage there. Just seems like he'd be at a disadvantage. But as a fan, do you want to see it? Yes. Absolutely. Carl Frotch, no name that he considered at 168 a few years back. I want to see it. I mean, Golovkin has been the boogeyman for so long, but... Andrade has been avoided for a long time. Absolutely. You avoided Golovkin. I avoided both. <laughs> <laughs> Andrade's just as much of a boogeyman to me. Hey, Sergio's no fool. Uh -uh. Let's be smart out there. That's why I'm here next to you guys. Volante there, a little success with the jab. Fires it out. She has tried to stay in this fight. 
body shots as well. And she had an overhand right by Taylor, but by this time she's already adapted to uh, Taylor's uh, power, timing, and speed. Right now, the only thing that will stop Volante is an accumulation of punches. Oh, it's a vicious combination. And just like that, here is Katie Taylor again, slapping it into a higher gear. Volante holding on now, looks to a corner for a little help, maybe some advice. Eats a hook twice to the ribs. And a hard right hand as well from Taylor. We just spoke with Tevin Farmer getting ready for the main event, his title defense. Chris Maddox earlier with the challenger, John O'Carroll. John O'First, is this the trimmed beard look we've been expecting? Yeah, the trimmed beard look. Took me ages. I did this for myself and all. I don't trust any here just doing one, so yeah, it looks well. But the commission haven't given it an okay yet, but we have no fight if they don't. <laughs> first, will. first fight here for you in the U.S., first world title opportunity. How are you feeling right now? I feel great. Nice and calm, relaxed. Um, I put all the hard work in the gym, so this is the fun part. This is the enjoyable part for me, you know. Um, I lap these occasions up. Just grab with both hands and go out there and enjoy myself. These press conferences have been pretty entertaining with the back and forth between you and Tevin Farmer. Where does this bad blood come from? Did you know Tevin Farmer before this? How did it all start? No, not at all. Um, I don't even know where to start, to be honest. It's like a typical when people have arguments. It's like they don't even know where to start from. But now it's just escalated and got to that next level, you know? I don't even know where to start from, but it's been fun while, while I've been doing it, you know? It's just so easy to get under the skin, you know? I just have to say one thing and bomb. He just erupts. It's so easy to go under the skin. It's like arguing with a 12-year-old. It's fun. You're the kind of fighter that likes to fight on the inside. You like to throw a lot of punches. What kind of fight do you want to avoid in a fight like this? Uh, I don't care. I can make this any type of fight I want, really, to be honest. Um, as long as I have him out of his comfort zone all night long, then it's, it's a good, good night's work for me, you know? Good luck, John. Thank you. I appreciate having me. That's coming up at the main event. Meantime, Katie Taylor, vicious and relentless. Going right after Rose Volante and in between rounds... Referee ben Benji Estevez stepped into Volante's corner and said, I'm going to give you a little bit of room, but I'm getting ready to stop it. And she is taking a lot of punishment. She's taking a lot of punishment, and I agree with Benji Estevez. She's, she's not in the fight. She's getting hit way too much. And look at those body shots. Ooh. Again, the, to the head and then the hook to the body. The thing is, she is so game. You know, like we saw with Gabe Rosado. You know, that they're not going to quit. They really do want it. She's undefeated, Rose Volante, 14-0, so when you have that O, you want to stay in there, but you can see three or four punch combinations coming out from Katie Taylor. And not for nothing, Brian, but we got to give two champions their due. I mean, th these are two champions. They want to go out like champions. Round nine scheduled for 10. You hear the yelling last round. That means you can end it here, final 30 seconds, which she can. And maybe they clashed heads there, and Volante hurt to the nose. Now, she's been hurt by a lot here, but it looks like Benji Estevez is saying that's it. That's it. It's over. Katie Taylor with the stoppage. Rose Volante is complaining, and I believe she might have a certain point saying, hey, that was a clash of heads. That was a clash of heads to the bridge of the nose. It opened up that gash. But regardless, Benji Estevez was already taking a close look at Volante. One more round ago, it wasn't a bad stoppage, in my opinion. I agree, too, and yet I understand why Volante might sense a bit of unfairness. You know what I'm saying? Unfairness, yes, I get it. She's a champion. She wants to hold on to her belt. She wants to last the distance. But fighter comes first. She was being overwhelmed by a, by a better fighter tonight. Just completely outboxed. You see the blood on the shirt of Benji Estevez, who stops it. Katie Taylor with a tremendous, I'll say it, wait, another tremendous performance. Another tremendous performance, and you know what? She stopped the fighter, an undefeated fighter who's never been stopped. On St. Patrick's Day weekend, a first-hand look here in Philadelphia at the most popular, the most accomplished, and respected athlete from the Republic of Ireland. We'll go back, and again, early. It was a spirited Rose Volante. But here, we would take a quick look at this, Sergio. That's, the, again, a clash of heads against the right to the bridge of the nose. That hurts an awful lot, probably breaks her nose. And then Estevez would stop the fight. It was an, it was an accidental, accidental clash of heads. But that was a bad cut. You've seen Volante bury her face in Estevez's shirt just to wipe the blood oh. off her nose. And the, that blood was only going to profusely bleed even more as the rounds went on. That hurts so much, Sergio, doesn't it? How many times has your nose been broken? 
Oh, too many. Don't remind you know me, even, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> don't remind me. I'm telling you, to see her wince like that, that's normal when you have someone's head hitting you on the bridge of the nose, and that's what she's complaining about here. She was outboxed. Michael Buffer is ready with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Benji Estevez calls a halt to the contest. The official time, one minute, 40 seconds of round number nine. This young lady now has three of the four major belts, just one belt away from being the undisputed champion. She's now IBF, WBA, WBO, women's lightweight champion of the world, the fighting pride of Ireland. K.T. Irish, Katie Taylor! Katie Taylor now has three of the four belts at 135 pounds. Delphine Persone has the other. She comes off a win last week, so no disrespect to Persone. She has one of the belts. Maybe every fight can be made. You would think so. Every fighter wants to make money. And at any rate, it's a pleasure to watch this fighter operate at the very highest level. Absolutely. She's an all-around A fighter. I mean, she does everything really, really well, from the moving, the punching, the technique. And tonight, she proves she has the pop behind the punch, too. So soft-spoken, again, and humble, uh, coming across anyone she meets here in the U.S. or back in Ireland. The punch stats, you see Rose Volante really gave it a good shot. She threw over 400 punches, outthrowing Katie Taylor, according to the stats. Uh, nowhere near landing as many punches. It was just, that was not a blowout, but it was convincing. It was wide. Power punches especially. Katie Taylor landing 51% of her punches. By the way, she is always extremely accurate, Sergio. She lands, on average, 39% of all her punches. The lightweight average is only 29%. So vintage Katie Taylor at her best. Chris Mannix is there with the champ in the ring. Katie, congratulations. Need somebody else to help you hold up all those belts right now. You finally had an opponent that was willing to stand and trade punches with you, and you took advantage of it, getting your sixth knockout of your career. What did you think about the way you fought? I thought it was a great, um, great performance. Um, Rose Valante is a very, very tough opponent. I knew she was going to come here to fight. I think um, she got the best out of me here tonight, and tonight we definitely seen um, a great showcase for women's boxing. After that second round, and you scored the knockdown in the first, your trainer Ross said, you got to calm down a little bit. Were you getting a little overexcited looking to get that stoppage? Yeah, that's a problem of mine since I have turn pro. I have to uh, stay composed a bit more, but thank God I have a genius coach in my corner. Rossi and White is an absolute genius, and I have uh, the best man working in my corner, so that's why I'm in this position now. You knew coming in that Rose has some power, eight knockouts on her resume. It looked like early on she was coming to try to stop you in the beginning. Could you feel that, and what did you think of her power? Yeah, she definitely had a bit of pop at the end of her punch, but I, I have a great change at the time for the end. I can stand there and trade punches with anyone, and I, I also have the power to hurt those girls. But when, you, when you do stand here and uh, fight, it's a problem for them. You now have three pieces of the 135-pound title. There's one more piece out there. Is that the fight you want? Absolutely. Now we can start talking about Delphine pretty soon. That, that name's been, been coming up over the last two years, and I've got the three belts. She's got the WBC belt, so we have to get that fight on next. Is that fight more appealing to you than, say, a fight with Cecilia Breakhouse or Amanda Serrano? I would take either one, really, but my, my, uh, my goal is to become the undisputed champion first and foremost, and the fights with Amanda and Cecilia are, are a lot bigger when I, when I have got, got the four belts. So Delphine Persoon is, is a fantastic champion. She's been a long-reigning champion for, for years now, and that's going to be a fantastic fight. Congratulations, Katie. Thank you so much, and thanks so much for everyone for the support. It was incredible.